Gary here with MacMost. At long last, the iPad comes with a calculator app. So starting with iPad OS 18 in September of 2024, the iPad comes with a built-in calculator app. This is something that was missing from the initial launch of the iPad and Apple hasn't actually included a calculator app until now. So let's go ahead and launch it here. You can launch it any way you like to launch apps and this is what it looks like. Now it works in both portrait mode like this but also in landscape mode as well. And when you first use it you're going to see it in basic mode which looks like a very simple calculator. So to do a calculation you would just do it like you would on a physical calculator. So let's add 1 and then plus 2 and then use the equals button to get the result. Now notice it actually works different than a regular calculator. On a regular calculator you would have seen the number 1 and then when you hit plus and then started typing the next number 2 it would have replaced the 1 with a 2. You would have to remember that that's what you were doing and then when you hit equals you would see the answer. But here it shows you the entire formula as you go. So you could type something like this 1 plus 2 and then keep going plus 3 minus 4 times 5 and you could see the entire calculation like this and when you're done and press equals you see the formula above it and then the answer below it. In fact you could recall the formula. Say you hit equals too early or you want to continue adding more to the calculation. You could tap on it and it will put it back here and you can continue to add new things to this. You can also use the delete button at any time to delete the last character you entered. So you can just keep hitting delete. If you hold the delete button it clears the entire thing. Now if you have a keyboard connected to your iPad you can also type on the keyboard. You don't need to use these buttons on the screen. And when you do get a result like this you can tap and hold the result and then select copy. This means you also have a memory as well in the form of your iPad's clipboard. You can tap and hold the answer here and copy and then start something new like this and then you can tap and hold and choose paste and it will paste in what you copied whether it's from calculator or something else. The only other buttons you have here are the plus and minus button and the percent button. The plus minus button allows you to convert a number to a negative. So you would first type the number and then this and you could see it puts it in parentheses to make it clear what's happening and you've got a negative 9 here. Percentage works just like it does on a regular calculator. So you could do some sort of calculation like let's do 4 plus 50 like that and then let's add 10 percent. The 10 goes first and then you use percent here and it will understand that you want to add this together so 54 and then add 10 percent like that. So the result here should be 54 plus 5.4 or 59.4. By the way if you find these videos valuable you can join the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts and more. Read about it right here. But the calculator does a lot more than just this. The first special feature I'm going to show you is the history. It's this button up here. So you can see the results of several calculations. Go right here. You can tap and hold one and you can copy the expression. You can copy the result or you can delete this individual one. You can also choose edit and then choose multiple ones for deletion or clear to clear them all. You can also swipe and then you can copy or delete one of these entries. But if you just tap on one what it will do is bring the equation and the answer back. I tap on this one and it brings this one back. Now in addition to the basic mode there's also a scientific calculator mode. So you tap this button here and you choose scientific and the buttons should be familiar to anybody that's ever used a scientific calculator. On the right here you get most of the same buttons you had before. All the numbers, you get all the operations but you also get all of these other functions just like on a physical scientific calculator. You even get a second set of functions if you use the second button also very similar to a lot of these calculators so you can see how some of those change if you have that it's kind of like a shift key. So to use a function you kind of follow the X and Y first number second number formula here. So if you wanted to raise something to a power you would do say 2 and then use this button here X to the Y and then 
you can see that is highlighted. You can use the second button there, 2 to the 4th, and it actually shows you the expression there instead of just the last number you typed. And you could use equals and see the result. X squared here, you can just do 8 and then you tap that and that's all you need. Just use equals and you get the answer. There's also a memory function here. So you can see memory clear, memory plus, memory minus, and memory recall. So you can type something like this. Let's even do something with it. There's 31. And now I'll use memory plus to put it in memory. And now I can clear and anytime I want I can use memory recall and it brings it back. I can use memory plus to add something to it. So let's add 2 to that. I'll add it to it. So now when I do memory recall you can see it's 33. And minus would be subtracting from memory. And memory clear here will clear it so you can see it's gone. So now memory recall doesn't do anything anymore. You could still use all that copy and paste and go to your history here and copy items from that as well. Now some of the functions here like sine and cosine, they work whether you use them before the number or after the number. So for instance, I can say I want 0.6 and then cosine and it puts the cosine function around that and I can get the answer. You can use these parentheses for regular expressions. So for instance, if I were to do 1 plus 2 times 3, the order of operations would say that the 2 and the 3 would get multiplied first for 6 and the answer would be 7. However, if I wanted to actually add 1 plus 2 together first, I could use parentheses for that. So left parenthesis and then 1 plus 2 and then right parenthesis and then multiply that answer by 3 and I get 9. You can actually use all of this in the basic mode as well if you use the scientific calculator mode as kind of an alternative and switch between them. So let me show you. Let's go back to the basic calculator here and let's go and say uh, 1 plus 2 plus and now I want to use a parenthesis. So I'm going to switch to scientific left paren and then let's do 3 plus 4 and then right paren and now I could switch back to basic and you can see the parentheses remain there. So I can multiply these by 5 and I can use parentheses in basic mode. I just can't type them. However, if you've got a keyboard connected to your iPad, then you can. And I'll get the answer here. Now, you can also do conversions. Let's go to this button here and convert is a switch. I'm going to turn that on. And now you're going to get two answer lines like this. So you're going to see the units here. In this case, it's feet and inches. But you could tap on one of these and change it. So for instance, I could change it to kilometer and it'll automatically put something else here that is the same kind of unit. But I could change that to something else. So for instance, I could change this to mile. So kilometers and miles. Now if I add some numbers together, like 1 plus 2, notice that the unit that's in white here, that's where the actual number goes. And the second one, the gray one, is a conversion. So this is actually adding 1 plus 2 to get 3 kilometers. I can use equals here to do that and see the result. But then I'm getting the other unit here automatically converted. I could use this button here to reverse them. So in this case now I'll be working in miles. So I can do 5 minus 2 for that and equals and I get 3 miles or 4.8 kilometers. So you have a whole variety of different things that you could choose here in terms of units. Tons of different types of units that you could use uh, and you can select between all of those. You also have one for currency. You can select a currency. You can actually search for a currency here. So let's search for say US dollars and select that. And then it's going to select euros here but you could choose something else. And now we can do something uh, in euros. I can just type a number. I don't even have to do a calculation and you could see I've got euros and US dollars there. Let's switch and there's US dollars to euros and I could type something else like that and get quick conversions. Currency is a little different than the others in that it's not a constant. It's actually drawing from the current daily prices so it's getting the, the same prices you might find in the Stocks app if you looked up a currency or did it in Spotlight. Now there's another mode. This is called Math Notes. So when you use this then it starts to look like the Notes app. And actually this is crossover functionality between Notes and Calculator on the iPad. 
So you're not in the notes app here. You're actually in calculator, but you are editing a note. In this case, there are none here. I'm going to create a new one. And now I've got a new note and I could tap in here and I could type. You can actually do calculations. So I could do 1 plus 2 and you could see it puts equals 3 there. I could actually press return twice to go to the next line. You could see the number is there. What's really interesting about this is you could change this. You can edit and I could say delete the 2 and put a 5 there. And you could see how it did that. Also if you hover over the number you get this little button here and you could tap it and now you've got kind of a slider you can go back and forth and change the number that way. And you could use all sorts of complex things here. So for instance I can use a left paren and then 5 plus 3 and then right paren and then I will multiply by 8 and you can see the answer there. You could also use functions here as well. So for instance I can do uh, sine and then I'll go and do 5 and close it and you can see it will use that function. So you can use all the different functions that you found before including using power. So I can do 4 and then I could raise that using this symbol here to the second power and I get the answer there. Now I've done other videos using math notes and this works the same here on the iPad. So you can do all sorts of things like you can use variables for instance. So I can say uh, a and equals 6 and then let's go, I'm just going to use a space here and stay on the same line and then b and then equals 3 and then a space and then to a and then plus b. Well, you can see it calculates the answer there. And then if I change one of these numbers, I will get a new result from that. Something you can do on the iPad and also on the iPhone, but not on the Mac, is to graph. In order to graph, you need an X and a Y. So I'm going to use Y and then equals, and then a formula that makes sense for a graph. And you can see insert graph appears right there. Or you can tap the equals character to bring this up again. And it's going to create this graph right here. And I could see the equation charted right there. I can actually tap on it as well. And I could change its color. And I could even add multiple lines, curves, and things like that to the same graph or create new graphs for them. Now, the other thing you do on your iPad that you certainly can't do on your Mac is use the Apple Pencil and actually write instead of type. So I'm going to tap on the button up here this one and that will bring up the writing tools here. You can see it right there. So I just want to use a standard pen right here and I can actually write something. So I could do like this and then equals and you can tap with your finger on a number there and then drag the number like that to get an answer. You could do the X and Y equations and all of that uh, using your Apple Pencil. So if you take notes like this, you can easily do it with your Apple Pencil as well as typing or a combination of those. And speaking of notes, I mentioned how this is kind of like being in the Notes app. And it is. Notice here I've got this math note here and it's what I see in the Calculator app when I choose math notes. However, if I were to go to the Notes app and look there under today, what I just created, or bring this up and actually just say I want to see math notes, then I get to see the same exact note. So it's not in two places. It's just in one place. You can access it from both the Notes app and from Calculator. Now one of the problems with using a calculator like this is that you have to switch to it, right? You're doing something else. And then you have to switch to the Calculator app, do a calculation, maybe copy the answer, and then go back to what you were doing. But you can multitask on the iPad. So for instance, the slide over functionality allows you to have another app open in a little window. As you can imagine, the calculator app is perfect for that. So one way to bring up slide over is to drag up from the bottom slightly to get the dock. Tap and drag the calculator app out to the right like this and then it appears in a little window. And you could do calculations while still using another app here. So you could type something here. You can switch back to using this. You can 
tap and hold and copy and then go over here and paste like that. So you've got that functionality. You can tap these three dots up here to close this. Another thing you can do is use split view. So the way to do that is you can drag up from the bottom again to bring up the dock. You can always tap here if you don't see calculator listed anywhere else. And you could drag up, but instead of just releasing it here, you could bring it all the way over to the right or to the left. And then it's split view now. And you can use the middle line there to drag to the right to make it much smaller. So it's just a different way of doing the same thing. You can also tap the three dots button here and then switch between split view, slide over, or the regular full screen mode of any app. You can also use the three dots up here to drag to the left like that if you want it on the other side. And even when in this mode, you could still switch to the scientific calculator and you could switch to math notes if you want. So there are the basics for using the calculator app. Obviously, there's a lot of power in the scientific calculator and even more power in math notes. I've got another video for using math notes and all the different things it can do. I show it on the Mac, but all that stuff will work on the iPad as well. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.